Okay, I am here in game and let's play the first few minutes of Return to Moria. Now I skipped the cutscenes and I'm gonna skip the cutscenes at the beginning of this uh, because I want everyone to experience the story uh, first time yourselves. So let's come in and hit play. I've got a couple of dwarves here that I've already made. Now I'm playing right now on Steam and I am using an Xbox controller. Let's go ahead and make a new dwarf. Um, so in this, the first thing you do, because of course it's a dwarf creator, is to choose your beard. So let's find a beard. I like that one. We're gonna leave this guy pretty close to default, but there are a lot of choices you can make. You can change the color, um, skin, head, lots of different heads choices. Um, you can choose uh, to look more feminine, middle, masculine, um, however you wanna do it. Um, and if you feel like all dwarves have beards all the time, make your dwarf with a beard. Uh, if that's a little less important to you, then choose however you want. We've got different kinds of tattoos, different uh, gilts. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna change the head. I kind of like that guy a little bit more. You can move all these sliders around to choose how uh, big, small, and different ways. Now, of course, because it's a dwarf, there's only so much you can do. He's still gonna look like a dwarf, but you can make some uh, some changes. Let's uh, let's give this guy a bigger, bigger belly, maybe a tighter waist. Yeah, he's kind of like dwarves that looked like that. And you can choose your personality that affects your emotes. You can choose your voice. Now there are ten different voices Tell you can choose. Oh, oh, that is a long way down. Oh, a hearty meal cures me. There's different all. accents, di different, uh, you know, more traditionally masculine or feminine sounding ones. There's even voices that let you play with this character almost entirely in the Dwarven language, Kuzdul, which we had David Sallow help us write. David Sallow has helped invent Dwarvish and uh, um, Elvish languages for the Peter Jackson movies as well. Um, and, you know, let's, let's leave him in coastal. That's pretty fun. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with with a classic voice. Doom awaits. Oh. Oh. Tell Doom. Mm, it's a hard choice. The mountain yeah, let's go with that one. Today. And you can choose your origin. This is different for those of you who love Lord of the Rings and know a lot about the dwarves, different places where your dwarf comes. Now this is purely cosmetic, uh, but it helps you tell a little bit more of a story. Uh, of where your dwarf would have come from. So let's, uh, you know, let's go Iron Hills. That looks very, very dwarfy. And then you can randomize or you can choose your own dwarf name. Uh, let's go. Oh, we gotta go Gloin, classic Gloin, named after the son or the father of Gimli. Uh, and let's create a world. Now, as I mentioned before, You've got this choice between campaign, which is a more story focused, very lore forward adventure or sandbox, uh, which is very nonlinear. And let's let's do campaign. So I'm going to create a campaign and I am going to play offline and let's get into it. Now, like I said, I'm going to skip the cinematics because I want you guys to see the story yes, uh, on your own. From every clan have answered your call, despite the. So after the doors, try to get in through the door with using blasting fire. Doesn't quite go the way they thought and you're trapped inside. And so here I am in the aftermath of that blast. Uh, I'm on my own. I need a torch. Too dark for dwarf eyes. And immediately I'm confronted with how dark this is. So if you look at the bottom left above where it says day one, there's a meter there. You can see the meter is a little bit on the right side. That means I am in light. Uh, if the meter moves a little bit to the left or all the way to the left side, that means I'm in darkness. And the dwarves have this sacred mission to bring darkness, or excuse me, the dwarves have a sacred mission to bring light to the dark places of the world. And so if you're in darkness, true to Tolkien's works, if you're in darkness for too long, you are subject to despair uh, because light and fellowship are the paths to 
goodness in Tolkien's world. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a torch. I'm going to find some wood scraps and things along the bottom, and I'm going to bring up the crafting menu, and you can see what right now the only thing I can make is a torch. So let's do that. Let's pull the torch out. And now you can see I've illuminated how much uh, brighter the world is there. So a lot of the game is finding places dark, sometimes maybe darker than a game than games you're used to, and building bases or torches in order to make it brighter. And in this update that is just about to come out, a patch from our release, we're going to be making the lighting even better. There must be a way back to come. Could try the doors of Durin from the inside. Let's get going. So along the way, at any point, you can come into our goals screen. You can see what your current goal is. You can see it's gather supplies. I can also come over here and I can um, get different tutorials. I can see in my current tutorial is craft a pickaxe. And along the way, I will unlock tips. So if you're ever not sure what to do, you can come in here, which is also a good a good time to talk about our difficulty settings. So if I come down here to difficulty, you can see I've got a lot of different ways I can choose how difficult. So right now I'm on the default and there is a lot of different ways I can customize the default. For now, I'm gonna say because I'm solo, I can go down to solo, that will make it. But for the purpose of this, I'm actually gonna go all the way down to story, which turns down the combat difficulty and the enemy aggression. That will let me kind of just show you a little bit more of the game. I'm gonna go into solo and then let's go ahead and make that pickaxe. You can see I also find these uh, braziers along the way and I can light them and that helps light, not only light up areas, but also kind of breadcrumb me through so I know where I've been uh, because it can be, uh, you can get a little turned around. So one of our main mechanics is digging. Pull out your pickaxe, uh, use the left mouse button, or in this case, the right trigger on the controller, and dig my way through. And anytime you see something that is called dirt, that means I can dig through that. Oh, firelight. We are not alone. You can see I'm unlocking recipes as I go here and I pick new things up. So my next goal oh, is to eat some mushrooms. So you can see where I talked about the light meter on the left, you can also see my health, which is the red bar. And right below it is my food or, or hunger meter, however you wanna call it. Um, and that will go up and down throughout the day. So here I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna eat some mushrooms. That'll fulfill the goal. And you can see it's not really going all that much up because the things that you find in forage and you eat, they'll give you a little bit, but the real way to fill that bar is to uh, cook meals, uh, which happens at your base, and we'll show you that in a second. Come here, grab some mushrooms. And I see, you know, if you uh, are a fan of The Hobbit, you'll know that the dwarves, especially the dwarves of Erebor, could speak the language of the ravens. And so here we have a raven that was with Gimli's camp. <laughs> are you from our camp? I am Arik, son of Arak. Yours is the only friendly face here. What happened to the rest of Khan? I cannot tell. A curse, ill curse, it blocks me. Could you search for another way out? For any other survivors? I will search. You go east, see what you can find. I will fly to you when I can. So Eric the Raven is your friend throughout this game, shows up with key information. And it's always good to see Eric throughout the darkness of Moria. Let's just keep going and see what he was talking about, about a curse. One of the things I, we love about the way that the digging works is you never really know where you're going to breach to on the other side. Sometimes you come through to another dwarven ruin. It might be a mother load of ore. 
uh, or it could be an orc camp. So one of the other key traversal mechanics in the game, a lot of the, the game ends up being, how do I get from here to there, especially in a vertical space? Uh, so you can jump and climb, uh, but there's also a way that you have some agency over how you climb. And, and the easiest way is to use our quick mechanics. So here I am pressing down on the D-pad, um, or it would be the V key on the keyboard. And that lets me place a plank anywhere I want. And that, let's put two planks on here. And now I can jump and I can climb. So traversing a vertical space is a really important part of this game. It almost makes it kind of a, a make your own platformer in a way. Eventually you unlock quick building uh, rope ladders that make it easier to go straight up. So here we're gonna dig through and continue. Remember Eric said, keep exploring, gather some supplies. He'll fly back to us after he tries to figure out what's going on. So here we've discovered the doors of Durin. I mentioned that at the beginning, Gimli tried to get in through the other side and couldn't do it. Something was stopping uh, them. Doors of Durin? What's wrong with that? I've never seen runes with such shadow. No wonder we couldn't get it open from the other side. So throughout the game, the story is told as you find things and read them, but most of the story is told through your dwarf's eyes. The dwarf will talk. If you're playing in multiplayer, they will have back and forth conversations explaining what's going on from the dwarf's point of view and so that you can learn uh, what they're feeling because they're the dwarf. You know, you're helping them, you're playing with them. You can also come into our, back here I mentioned in the goals, you can see where the goal is, but you also uncover mysteries throughout the game. So here's our first mystery we found, and this is that the doors of Durin are cursed. So I can learn a lot more than the dwarf says. So if I'm really into the lore, if I'm really into the story building, I can come in and read that. I can also come into the appendices and you can see throughout, I've unlocked a whole lot of information about different characters of Durin's folk, about the company, why are we here? What was what was the contract with Gimli? So there's a lot of things in there that, that you can learn about. If you love Lord of the Rings and you're really into the lore, there's a whole lot here for you. And in fact, you might notice this is a very famous spot in the books. This, just on this other side of the door, was where Frodo was attacked by the Watcher, and they had to run in here. So along these steps is where they would have stopped for a break. In fact, if you're willing to explore a little bit, you will find one of our collectibles in the game. This, these are the signs of the Fellowship, one of the things you can discover throughout exploration. So in this case, you find this is where the Fellowship stopped and took a rest when they realized they were in the Dark of Moria for that they were going to have to go all the way through. You can find these all throughout. In fact, once you've unlocked every part of the game, you could follow the Fellowship's journey all the way from uh, the West Gate to the East Gate if you wanted to. And that includes key and interesting landmarks like here on the steps, uh, along with Balin's tomb and the Bridge of Khazad-dûm. Those are much later in the game, though. Track them down. We'll kill them for your boss. Not yet, fool. Walk town needs to prepare. Well, if we were wondering if the orcs survived the destruction of Mordor, here we have found that not only are there some orcs here, but it sounds like an entire town of orcs. Throughout the game, you will discover multiple tribes of orcs. You will find out why they're here, where they came from. That includes survivors from Mordor, along with orcs that never left Moria, the kind that the Fellowship fought on their way through. So we'll gather some more resources as we go. You know, one of the things we wanted to show was that Moria really kind of is a tomb, as Boromir said. 
it was abandoned uh, pretty quickly. And so there are signs of fighting. Uh, there are things just strewn about. I and mean, it's been a thousand years since the dwarves lived here. So, And here our friend Eric has come back. What news? Ah, there's no way west. No way out. I did not think we would see shadow cast runes in Moria. Our path then must go east. Ah, long journey. You must prepare. Up here, at that old dwarven camp. You're right. It's time to find shelter before making our way farther. I will scout ahead. Stay alive. With luck, we'll exit the Dimril Gate. For now, we must face the long dark of Moria. So that does it. We are going to have to follow the path of the Fellowship and go from the West Gate to the East Gate. So here you can see I've got a new goal. Prepare for the long dark. Build a base and start. This is where you really start seeing the base building and the crafting loop. So let's go on up here to this part of the tutorial. An outpost of Balin's company. We can shelter here. So here we find our first Balin outpost. So uh, if you'll recall, uh, Gimli's uncle Balin, who was a part of the company of Thorin and went with Bilbo to reclaim Erebor, at some point, he came back to Moria in a very ill-fated attempt to retake it a little too early. And we learn eventually why that was so ill-fated. But while they were here, they had several outposts. And so here we found one of them. In the campaign game, these serve as quick starter bases that you can very uh, rapidly get up and going. In campaign, these don't exist because you have to build everything yourself there. So here we found actually records of Ori, Ori also in The Hobbit. And along the way you find, why were they here? What's going on? So let's come in and we can see that there are crafting stations, ruined ones that I can rebuild. And this will help us get into that base and crafting part of the game loop much faster. So let's rebuild the stone hearth. And you can hear, because I'm now in a base, uh, the music changes to tell me that I am here. Now, that's great that I've got that, but I need to make a bedroll. Now, bedroll, like many survival crafting games, uh, beds are the place where you choose your new spawn point, uh, where you will, if you die, where you'll respawn, uh, and where you'll sleep for the night. So let's go ahead and put one down, and I'll claim that. That will complete that tutorial. And now the next tutorial is to teach us a little bit about the food system. So the food is a little interesting, a little different in this game. Uh, there are two kinds of food. There are rations, which are the kinds of food that you take with you and you can eat out on an adventure. And then there are meals and meals have to be eaten here on a meal table. And they're the bigger ones. And so what happens is you can cook or craft or scavenge rations and they're a little rare and you take those out on an adventure and then but when you really need to recover your energy your stamina your health you come back to your base and you cook yourself a meal so let's get let's go ahead and cook a meal and we'll let that come on there's a lot more nuance to the cooking system about breakfast lunch and dinner but for now we'll just cook that and get going while we're waiting let's make this uh just a little bit brighter here. Let's put up a wall torch. One over here. How about we put one right there. Uh, and we should rebuild this. This is not going to be very safe in case those orcs come back. So let's just use the pickaxe. Let's clean up a little bit of these broken ruins. which means my food is ready. So let's go and you can see the meal. Now, this really gets full if you make all, full, all eight uh, 
meals for a full eight part eight person party. So now I've cooked, you can see that my uh, health and uh, my hunger have gone back up. And next tutorial, we're going to build a storage chest, which is always good. Sometimes you just gotta empty your pockets. So let's go ahead and put some of the stuff we've got in here that we don't wanna carry with us. Always bring some wood with you though. And you know what, that's a reminder, I don't have a weapon. Let's build, let's quickly build an improvised weapon. Now these don't really last very long, uh, but good to have in a pinch. Uh, the next part is to rebuild this furnace. Once we've rebuilt the furnace, that happened very quick, um, we can start crafting iron ingots. That gets us into the crafting loop for armor and weapons. Now in a lot of survival games, you kind of go through you know, wood to bronze on, on, and you go through this like different set starting with really basic wood stuff. But these are dwarves and we're gonna start right with metalworking. And so instead of going from, based on material of like wood stuff is weaker and then metal stuff is better, uh, with the dwarves, it's actually much more about finding ancient ways of making stuff and ancient dwarf craft so you'll start off with these fourth age things and eventually you'll discover more third age uh, recipes but when you get to the first age stuff that's the really good stuff so let's go find ourselves well actually you know what before we go find some iron i want to go ahead and build this up here protect it a little bit more so let's put that down and let's put down a wall. Oh, don't have enough stone. Let's uh, let's go ahead and break this bit of stone. Oh, okay. Well, we got a good thing I made that axe. So here we have our first fight: the uh, the wild wolves related to the wargs here. ready for this one. I need to remember to dodge. I can target lock if I'm on controller. There we go. So a lot of combat is about having the right weapon to go against the right enemy. You'll notice that the damage numbers will be a different color if you have the wrong tier of weapon. Uh, but it's about blocking, getting a perfect block, pushing off, dodging. So let's... Uh I think that's a good reason why I was trying to build up this wall. There we go. It's getting into evening. It's getting a little bit darker. And you know, just because I want it to be for the video, I'm just gonna make it one step brighter just for the capture. So here we are gonna learn about mining. Now, along the way, you'll see I find there's a statue here. So once I have made an iron hammer, I'll be able to repair these statues. Repairing the statues is one of the ways that you earn new crafting recipes in the game. So each area of the game has different weapons and armor recipes. So you really need to repair all the statues, get those recipes, get those resources and craft the better stuff. So as you move forward, you will be consistently going into harder and harder areas that will require you to keep upgrading your stuff. So let's pull out our pickaxe and we've got ourselves an iron vein. So I can use dwarf vision here to look, it says iron ore. When it's dark, I can look around and it will tell me if there's ore nearby. So let's come in here, build ourselves a plank and let's start digging. And then I get to show you one of my favorite things in the game. So when I'm digging, sometimes inspiration will strike and I can start singing. If a spider skittered across my camp, a terrible day would have she. If a spider skittered across my camp, a terrible day would have she. I'm a feisty fool with an empty fork, and if she would not flee, she would wind up caught in an eight-leg knot. Find her for dinner for me. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So I think that's enough iron. I love the singing. So that was just me singing because I'm playing by myself. Uh, the singing, because there are 10 voices, there are that many singing voices. 
And if you are playing with friends, whoever starts the song is the lead, their voice is the lead. You can join, you can play up to eight, uh, or you can sing songs with up to eight people. And there's multiple kinds of songs. That was a mining work song. You can also uh, craft breweries and brew ale. There are tavern songs that you sing with a mug in your hand. And then at more venerable moments in the game, you sing um, much more, um, you know, songs with much more gravitas. So I've got the ore. Let's go on back. You know what? I'm going to give myself a shortcut here. And it's nighttime too, so we should probably get ready to go to bed. So now I should be able to come back to our forge and go ahead and add some fuel. In this case, I've got some, um, some coal. And I'm going to go ahead and load that up. So we've got four iron ore coming. Now that might take a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and I think now's probably a good time to sleep. So sleeping resets the danger level of the dungeon. Um, when do we attack? I want to taste more flesh. <laughs> so there you can hear the orcs are plotting to attack. So we got to better be a little bit careful and start getting our stuff going. So I've collected the ore and now I can repair this forge. So let's repair the forge. Now, if you're building a base on your own, you can absolutely use these starter bases or you can build your own base. Um, you, It's basically the same resources it would take. So you, you could build it somewhere else. For the tutorial and campaign, I suggest you go through this because it, it teaches you all the key mechanics. So here I have unlocked the forge and you can see I can make a new sword, a shield um, and the hammer. All of these are going to require a little bit more iron. So let's go. Now, it is still dark. I, I slept a little. I woke up a little early. I'm going to go ahead and start another meal. I will come back to that because I bet I'm going to be hungry soon. And it's going to be pitch dark out here. But let's go see if I... Ooh. Oh, man. Goblin scared me. I heard somebody say something. Looks like we got a little bit more iron we didn't collect here. So let's... Uh... Let's go get the rest of that iron here. When you get in tight quarters, the camera can get a little bit, not quite first person, but. If a wolf should pad along my path, a terrible day it have he. If a wolf should pad along my path, a terrible day it have he. I'm a feisty fool with an empty fork, and if he would not flee, I would hang that tail with a copper nail, wolf for dinner for me. So if you like the songs, our Steam version has a bundle that includes a, a 34 track soundtrack along with a art book. So let's see, how many more? We got a little bit more ore. Let's go start that ore up. And we may have to go exploring to look for some more ore to finish this out. Oh, good. Meal's ready. Okay. Oh, that's right. We got to make the ingot. Oh, that was only enough for one more ingot. Well, is that going to be enough? I need two more. Well, we need more ore. Now we have to go do a little bit more exploration. I better make another torch here. Okay. We got orcs! No. Oh. He's just kind of watching me, huh? Let's see if we can get him. Mm. Okay, well, they're just kind of watching me now. That's not creepy at all. Let's take a look at this. A Muznakan to a family of old. I'll return the missing figures. Honor them. At different areas of the game, you find these Muznakans, which are collections of figurines of dwarven ancestors. And if you find all the figurines and bring them back here, you unlock new and more powerful recipes. So that's the second way that you can unlock things. Um, one thing I haven't done is shown you what happens when you go inside one of these buildings. So a lot of the game is also about scavenging. 
um, trying to find resources that were left here. So we've got a lot of wood um, and we've got crates like this that I can break and gather. And so there I have collected uh, some seeds that I'll be able to plant a little later. Let's go see if there's anything upstairs. So some stuff I can break for some resources, get some cloth. So scavenging in buildings is a great way to find new resources. If I'm lucky, I can find one of the food containers, which will have some rations, and those are really useful for me. Let's uh, let's keep going. We've got, we've got some coal here. Well, we're not out of coal yet, so we don't quite need that. We need some iron. So let's move forward and see if we can find ourselves some iron. I've got another statue. Got to remember to come back and get that one. Okay, walking through a dwarven hall here with some a good source of meat, which are the rats. A hungry dwarf has no problem eating whatever meat is available, especially if it is roasted meat. Okay. So we're coming into another urban area here. Let's see. Still no iron. Wait. There we go. What is that? Iron. Perfect. Oh. Okay. Well, gonna have to fight off a wolf first. And they always get the first shot at me. The team often jokes that I'm the worst person to demo combat. Because I'm not that great at it. But here we've got some more irons, exactly what we were looking for. So throughout the game, you will find these um, ore deposits that it, early in the game, coal and iron, eventually copper, tin, silver, gold, and when you get towards the end of the game, that's where you get Mithril. You'll notice singing is not coming up. There's a bit of a cooldown. Um, we do have a lot of songs in the game, but we don't want you to feel like you have to sing every single time. The tech we use here is voxels, so sometimes you see little chunks floating. I like to just clean them up as we go. Sometimes you'll be digging through these and you'll think it's just ore. You'll get to the end uh, and you'll get into stone. Or sometimes you'll break right on through into another area or even dig downward into a hidden area. There's a lot of little hidden areas to find. So it's always good to try to dig out the entire vein. Let's see how many we got here. Oh yeah, that's plenty. And you know what, while we're here, let's see if we can go in this building. There might be, oh, well look at that. Well, the Diamond. This is a new creature invented for the game, kind of like a, a badger, boar, pig thing, something that digs underground. A little easier to use the pickaxe to break these. Okay. Cool. <laughs> They're not gonna last this night. Do not like those goblins watching me and then running away. That is continues to be disconcerting. Let's head on back to our base. Let's check the map here. Uh, so let me zoom in. So we got to go up and to the right here. And you know, I can actually go to my camp and I can turn that on. I like to turn these waypoints on. Some, some of them automatically are on, but we don't want to pollute your screen. So we don't always do it ourselves. And so here I can actually see where in 3D space. So because the game is very vertical, um, sometimes you need to do that in order to, to get a good sense of whether you need to go up or down. Uh, for anyone that's played a game like Subnautica, um, they do that really well, and absolutely you should play Subnautica, it's a great game. Okay, let's 
head on back. Don't mind using my stamina sprinting for this, especially because we're not quite in a lot of danger yet. Okay, let's come in, let's load this up. Looks like we got one ready to go, but we're gonna want to make some more. Okay, good. And let's look around. Oh, you know what, I didn't look at this chest. Let's go take a look at this. Ah, it's an Akfor chest. So in our game, Akfor chests are dwarven chests that um, the only way to open them is with a very specific key, but the dwarves uh, leave little messages to each other inscribed on the chest, which is the recipe or the instructions for crafting the key. That way only dwarves can make it because only dwarves know how to read their secret language. A dwarven chest. Let's get you open, see what you're keeping secret. So you'll find these throughout the game with a reward inside, many times a story reward inside, but one extra little step, which is you have to make the key. So let's go ahead and collect that iron. Do we have enough to make the sword? We do. Awesome. So now we've completed the early game tutorial, um, and now I've completed my goal, prepare for the long dark. And it is time for me to move forward. So that is the very beginning of the game. There is so much more to discover, uh, so much more to see. This is just the first few minutes and the first area. There are so many more interesting and shocking areas. I absolutely encourage you, look at the trailer, watch other streams. Um, if you're still curious about the game, there are many great streamers who have uh, played the game. You can go find their video on demand and watch them play. Uh, you can watch people play it all the way to the end if you want. So thanks for your time. I hope this was instructive on what the Lord of the Rings Return to Moria is and hope it gives you a little bit of a sense of what you would get uh, for your value. Uh, so thanks so much and uh, we'll see you soon.